Olá pessoal da Game FM, eu sou o Felipe Vinho, eu estou aqui na BGS 2017, a BGS de número 10 e eu estou agora com uma presença, eu estou honrado aqui de estar do lado dele, é o Nolan Bushnell, ele é o criador do Atari, o primeiro Atari, provavelmente o primeiro console de muita gente aí, muitos de vocês, o meu foi inclusive, e eu quero conversar com ele um pouquinho sobre o histórico dele e a importância dele para a indústria. Hi Mr. Bushnell, how are you? Great to be here, I love, I love Brazil. And I understand that you are from Rio, which is even more fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not your first time Brazil's there. No, I, I like to come down whenever I can. It's, you know, it's a great gaming environment. People love the games, passionate about it, and uh, I, I think that, uh, I think that the culture here is very, very enthusiastic. Yeah. And you know something about the, the market of the Atari here in Brazil back in the days? Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> in the early days, we would, there was very high duty on games in Brazil. And so we, we sold a whole bunch of games to Panama. And somehow, they ended up in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> It's like magic. <laughs> it's mad I don't know. We, we were kind of concerned because it looked like there were so many games going into Panama that everybody must have been eating them for breakfast. <laughs> and you know some of the... Uh, of your, obviously, you were here in BGS today. You talked to some fans, maybe. Yes. And you know the passion the Brazilian fans have because of you, of the Atari? Well, very passionate and very knowledgeable. I mean, I feel like some of the people knew more of the cartridges than I did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know that it's uh, a question that you get very often, maybe. maybe but I want to know more about the the, uh, the first production of the Atari. Maybe the, the inspiration, where it came from, when you began uh, assembling the ideas for the first Atari. Well, the idea really happened when I was in college, that I was working summers at an amusement park, and uh, I worked my way up to manager. I was a young man, but I had a certain amount of skill, and, and uh, one of the things that I managed was an arcade. So I understood the coin-operated game business. I knew how much they had to earn, I knew how, you know, in coin drop, and I knew how much they needed to cost. Juxtaposition that with, I was at the University of Utah, which was one of the first universities that really had a video graphics department on big computers. And so I knew that the games that we were playing on the big computers, if I could put a coin slot on, people would put money in. But you then divide 25 cents for three minutes into a half a million dollar computer and the math didn't work. <laughs> But even then I, I could see that every year computers were getting cheaper, chips were getting faster, and I felt it was just a matter of time. And so I graduated, moved to California, worked in industry, and one day the chip prices came down and I said, I can do this. Now's the time. Now's the time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And you know that, the, uh, obviously, you know that the Atari is being relaunched in worldwide basis, including Brazil. Oh, yes. What do you think about this, this kind of nostalgia came back from the, the first video game you ever created? I'm very proud, uh, you know, to be a part of it and, uh, and to have people, fan, you know, fans. I mean, it's always nice to have people say, hey, I love the work you've done. Um, I mean, I think uh, musicians love applause, and I think businessmen love to have people appreciate your product. Nice. And what about modern video games, uh, the, the, the actual modern consoles? They, they are very different from the, the first Atari, obviously, but uh, do you think the, the evolution came well, came along, or, or do you think it's, it's very, very different from your early idea? No, I think that uh, the evolution it was actually pretty predictable. Um, I always felt that an architecture which 
you had a line buffer could give you the kind of graphics that the early Famicom, the Nintendo, had. And they did it, the, you know, almost identically to the architecture that I that I thought we'd do. And then later on, as memory got cheaper and cheaper, graphics got better and better, and uh, you know, it's just this endless progress to where now, you know, the early Atari games were 200k, or you know, yeah, 2,000 bytes, 2k bytes. Yeah. You know, silly, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and now, if you don't, if you don't have two gigabytes. You know, you can't do, you can't run a game. You know, come on. You know. <laughs> How do you felt uh, back in the days with the uh, infamous uh, video game crash in 19, uh, 1984, maybe? It was, uh, it was in the Atari era, uh, before NES. Uh, how do you felt as a creator of the Atari uh, in this era? Well, I had been, I had... Uh, left Atari for five years and I think if they were going to give Academy Awards to stupid business decisions Atari would have won, the one, won it that year you know Atari single-handedly caused that collapse and it wasn't because of bad games it was it was just a series of stupid marketing decisions they loaded up the market with a game that was obsolete and had saturated and they tried to sell another 10 million in and, they, and the market says no thank you and do you think it's it's possible to repeat this scenario today i don't think so i think that uh, i think that today the marketplace is much more darwinian in that the companies don't get to the size they are now by having idiots running them. <laughs> it's, a very, it's a very good answer. Um, the last question is about, uh, it's a little, a, a bit of curiosity. I have seen the new Blade Runner movie. Have you saw that? Yeah. I haven't yeah, the, seen it yet, but everybody tells me yeah. the Atari logo. Yeah, yeah, on. there's an Atari logo on in one scene, and we, we see that very often yeah. in media when it's when the movies on or shows are displaying are displaying uh, this topic futures. We always see we always saw Atari logo displayed like like Atari. It's a futuristic, yeah, fr uh, franchise or well, that's, that's you know Atari. Uh, when it started, we put that idea together that we were the, f the future of, of entertainment. And so I think in a lot of people's minds, Atari still feels that way. Plus, let's face it, it's a really good logo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Bushno, that's it. Thank you for your time. I hope Thank you me. enjoy BGS. Oh, I love it here. <laughs> you know. And come back, off to, come back to Rio? Yeah. <laughs> well... Because of the Caparinas, I'll definitely do it. <laughs> yeah, when, you go, when you go there, let me know where you can have a Caparina together. <laughs> Galera, esse foi o Nolan Bush, né, o criador da Atari aqui falando com a Game FM. A gente fica por aqui. Se você quiser ver mais vídeos da BGS, é só assinar o canal da Game FM e ficar ligado. Se você gostou desse seu comentário, deixe seu like. A gente se vê nos próximos vídeos. Valeu! Thank you. Be good. <laughs>